Today, we are talking all things stealth. Now, we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. One of the great things about Seven Days to Die is just how customizable the game actually is. Through the use of the perk system, the player can actually customize their character to fit their particular gameplay style. There is no right or wrong way to play Seven Days to Die. This was not always the case. In previous versions, in order to be successful, players were kind of limited and were actually forced to take certain perks. In Alpha 19, however, the developers took a more balanced approach, which allows the player much more flexibility. So today, we are going to take a look at one style of gameplay. I'm talking about stealth. You want to be a sneaky ninja creeping your way through the zombie apocalypse? In 7 Days to Die Alpha 19, you absolutely can. So we are going to go over how to build the absolute best stealth characters, the available perks, weaponry, books, everything you need to know in order to effectively build a stealth character. First, let's take a look at the attributes and perks that are necessary in order to build an effective stealth character. And the great thing about the stealth build is that most of the perks are located in one attribute tree, the agility attribute. The attribute itself gives you a bonus to headshot damage and an extra chance to dismember with bows, handguns, and knives. At level 10, you're going to be dealing 300% more headshot damage and have a 50% chance to dismember with those weapons. Now, the great thing about a stealth build is you can actually get a very effective stealth character without having to spend a max massive amount of skill points. The main cost when upgrading a character is the attribute cost. And since we really only have one attribute that we have to focus on, stealth builds are actually the cheapest builds in the game. But before we get any deeper into the actual build itself, let's take a look at some of the perks available in the agility tree. The first perk we want to look at is archery. And I absolutely love the fact that the fun pimps actually made archery worth it. In previous versions, bows were worthless. They were just too slow and did not deal enough damage to over come the firing speed. That has changed in recent updates. Now, bows and crossbows get an extra 3.5 damage multiplier when you hit a sneak shot. That is awesome. Each level of the archery perk allows you to deal more damage, aim faster, and draw and reload faster. At level 5, you'll be dealing 50% more damage, have 50% faster aim, draw, and reload speed with bows. And this is both the bow and the crossbow. Next up, let's take a look at Gunslinger. This perk governs handguns and the SMG. And that is all handguns. So the pistol, the magnum, and the oh-so-powerful Desert Vulture. Each level of Gunslinger helps you deal more damage, fire faster, and reload faster with handguns and the SMG. Get this bad boy all the way up to level 5, you'll be dealing 50% more damage, have a 25% faster fire rate and a 30% faster reload speed with handguns. Now let's take a look at the stealth perks. The first stealth perk is Hidden Strike. Hidden Strike increases the amount of sneak attack damage that your weapon will do. Every level gives you an extra 50% sneak attack damage. Get this all the way up to level 5 and you'll be dealing an extra 250% damage. Now keep in mind, archery weapons already have a 350% sneak attack damage boost. So with the Hidden Strike perk maxed out, that moves up to a whopping 600% sneak attack damage boost. That is insane. The next stealth perk is From the Shadows. This perk allows you to hide more effectively, it muffles the noise from your actions, and it allows you to move faster while sneaking. It also decreases the amount of time the zombie jerks will continue 
continue searching for you once they have detected you. Get this bad boy up to level five and you'll be able to hide 65% more effectively. Your noises are reduced by 50% and you'll be moving 50% faster while sneaking. Now those are the main perks that you wanna worry about with the stealth build. There are others that we're gonna touch on, but we're gonna, we're gonna wait until we actually do our build and I'll explain those at that time. But for now, those are the ones that you really wanna concern yourself with and the ones that will really make a huge difference in building an effective stealth character. Now let's take a look at the various book series that affect stealth. There are several books that will make your stealth character a whole lot better. And the first book series we wanna look at is the Night Stalker. Almost every book in this series will improve the effectiveness of your stealth character. Volume one allows you to do 10% more sneak damage at night. Volume two makes you sneak even better at night. Volume four allows you to never be encumbered at night. That is awesome. Volume five gives you 10% more damage with your bow at night. And volume seven gives you an extra 50% sneak damage to sleeping victims at night. The Night Stalker book series was tailor-made for the stealth build. The next book series we want to look at is The Great Heist. While most of the books in this book series aren't particularly pertinent to a stealth build, there are a couple volumes that are highly, highly useful. The first one is volume six. This allows you to use no stamina while sneak sprinting. And also volume seven. While in a single player mode, this book is not very useful, in multiplayer, the ability to sneak past motion detection devices can be very useful. And the last book series we wanna take a look at is the Urban Combat book series. The Urban Combat book series has some of the best skill books in the game. And that is overall, that is universal no matter what your build is. However, if you are going for a stealth build, this book series has some vital books that you absolutely must have. The first book we wanna take a look at is volume three. Sneaking over trash makes no sound. That is absolutely huge for a stealth build. Next, we have volume four. Sneak landings make less sound and sneak jump height is not reduced. Both of those abilities are extremely important. Volume one gives you the ability to craft military stealth boots. For a stealth build, the military stealth boots are absolutely amazing. And the completion bonus for urban combat is also incredible. Silencers have no damage penalty. Now, if you're making a stealth build, having a silencer on your firearm is a must. The unfortunate side effect of the silencer is that it does decrease the damage output for the weapon. Well, once you complete urban combat, that damage penalty goes away, meaning you can silence your weapon without having to sacrifice the damage. Now, there are also book series that govern the weapons that are important to a stealth build. For instance, there's Ranger's Guide to Archery for your bows and crossbows, Pistol Pete for your pistol and submachine guns, and the Magnum Enforcer for the Desert Vulture. So you'll definitely want to be on the lookout for these skill books as well. Now let's take a look at some of the equipment involved in a stealth build. First, let's take a look at the different armor sets that I would recommend for a stealth build. And if you are building a stealth character, you definitely want to go with light armor. Light armor costs a lot less stamina to wear, has a much lower movement penalty, and increases your noise level a lot less than the heavy heavy armor does. So for the stealth build, you definitely want to go with light armor. There are three tiers to light armor. You've got your padded level, you have your leather level, and you have tier three, the military level. All three of these are excellent, excellent options for a stealth build, but I'm going to show you my favorite here in a little bit, and it may surprise you, but we're going to save that until we actually get out in the world and demonstrate a stealth build in action. Another important piece of equipment to be on the lookout for is the ski goggles.
levels. This will automatically give you an agility boost of plus one. As I stated previously, agility is really the only attribute that you have to concern yourself with in order to build an effective stealth character. So having that automatic plus one to agility means that you can max that bad boy out and save yourself those final three points. Awesome, awesome piece of equipment to have. Definitely be on the lookout for the ski goggles. Another very important piece of equipment is the night vision goggles. These things are actually pretty darn cool. Now we talked about the Night Stalker book series. All of those books increase your abilities at night. However, at night, it can be very difficult to see. Switching on your headlight will vastly increase your noise level and the ability for the zombie jerks to detect you. The night vision goggles, however, can be turned on with no penalty whatsoever. In previous alphas, the night vision goggles were kind of crap. You couldn't see anything with them. They were actually pretty terrible. But in the latest version, the night vision goggles are actually very effective. So it's a great way to be able to continue raiding POIs without having to turn on your helmet light. You maintain your stealth level and still still are able to see what you're doing. And now let's take a look at some of the primary weapons you're gonna be using with a stealth build. First up, we have the bow and the crossbow. These are gonna be your primary weapons. And the reason for that is simple. They get a massive sneak damage boost. As you see here, the compound bow and the compound crossbow both get a plus 200% sneak damage bonus. That is extremely important. Now, in my opinion, with every build, you are going to need a ranged weapon, a weapon that you will use to hit the zombie jerks when they're very far away, but you also need a close quarters weapon. Just in case the zombie jerks do actually wake up, you do need a powerful weapon that you can use as they're charging towards you. That is where this next set of weapons comes into play. You have the pistol, the SMG, or the desert vulture. These three weapons are great for close quarters, especially the SMG. The SMG absolutely shreds the zombie jerks. Same with the desert vulture. This thing is a powerhouse. Now I would not recommend using these as your primary weapons if you're doing a, a stealth build, just because they do not get that bonus stealth damage. The bow and the crossbow should be your primary go-to weapons, but you do want to have a secondary weapon to take care of the zombie jerks if they do happen to wake up. I would recommend going with any one of these weapons. Start with the pistol in the beginning, and then when you have the ability, make yourself an SMG or make yourself a desert vulture. One thing to keep in mind, however, is even when silenced, the desert vulture is extremely loud. So yes, you might be able to take care of the jerk in front of you, but you also run the risk of waking up jerks in the area. So keep that in mind if you decide to go with the Desert Vulture as your secondary weapon. The SMG, however, is much, much quieter when silenced. You can actually silence the SMG and lessen the possibility of the zombie jerks waking up. So use your bow or your crossbow to take down the sleeping jerks, but just in case they wake up, have your pistol, your SMG, or your Desert Vulture as backup to take them out before they reach you. So now let's head out to the rifle range and let me demonstrate some of these perks and weapons in action. The first thing we want to take a look at is the hidden strike. I'm going to demonstrate just how awesome this perk actually is for a stealth build. I also want to demonstrate the bow as well, just how awesome the bow is. So we're going to go into sneak mode. We've got Arlene sitting right there and we are going to demonstrate how effective the bow is at sneak damage. So you notice it says sneak damage bonus 3.5 times. That is with no perks, that's just the bow itself. And the same holds true for the crossbow. Sneak damage bonus 3.5 times. Now, if we contrast that to the silenced pistol, you'll notice the sneak attack bonus was only 1.5. So you're not getting nearly as much sneak attack bonus damage with the pistol or the firearms that you do with the bow and crossbow. That's why with a stealth build, you definitely want a bow and crossbow to be your primary weapon. Now let me show you the effectiveness of that hidden strike perk. So you saw that we were doing 3.5 times extra damage with the bow. So let's go ahead and open up level one of hidden strike. 
strike. Now we will go ahead and take out Arlene here. And you notice sneak damage bonus four times. Now let's go ahead and get this thing all the way up to level five. This gives us an extra 250% sneak attack damage. So now when we take aim at Arlene, boom, shoot her in the back of the head, sneak attack damage bonus six times. That is insane. So let's take a look at just how effective that is. Not only does your weapon give you a sneak attack bonus of 200%, hidden strike gives you a, a sneak attack bonus of 250%, the agility perk gives you an extra 300% headshot damage, and if we were able to get our archery up to level five, we would be dealing an extra 50% damage. Add all of that up and and your bow or crossbow is doing 950% damage. That is almost 10 times the amount of damage with a sneak attack headshot. So if we take a look at our compound crossbow, we would be dealing nearly 8 100 damage to a zombie jerk. That's enough damage to one shot almost every zombie in the game. And that's just with the weapon, the attribute, and the perks. Add on top of that all of the book series that increase your damage even more. And oh my gosh, you can deal a crap ton of damage with the bow or the crossbow. It is insane. So now let's take a look at my perfect stealth build character. Now I'm going to do this in a couple of different tiers. First, I'm going to show you a stealth build without all of the bells and the whistles. And again, it is all straight agility. So we have our agility maxed out to level 10. And keep in mind with the agility glasses, the ski goggles, you can actually save yourself skill points. You don't have to go into agility 10. You can go to agility 9 and use those goggles to bump you up to level 10. But we have our archery perk maxed out. We have our gunslinger perk maxed out and we have both of the stealth perks maxed out. That's really all you need in order to have a very effective stealth build. And all of this can be done for 36 skill points. That means all you need is 32 levels. You, remember, you get four points by completing the beginner quests. So at level 32, you could have yourself a killer stealth character. But I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna sprinkle in a few perks that I think would would actually make this build even better. In the agility tree, I went ahead and added run and gun, light armor, and parkour. Now the purpose of a stealth build is to kill the zombie jerks before they see you, before they wake up. However, occasionally they are going to spot you and you may need to run away. So just in case, add run and gun just so you have no movement penalty. You can reload your, your weapon with no movement penalty and get a little bit uh, improved accuracy while hip firing. Light armor gives you the ability to craft better light armor and it reduces the movement penalty by 75% and the stamina penalty by 50%. This one is kind of iffy. Believe it or not, the actual armor perks are not very great. You don't really need them, especially with the book series and with something I'm gonna show you here in just a little bit. You could actually save these four points. You don't really have to put these points in here. They're not really necessary. I would say if you can, cool. If you can't, no big loss, but I went ahead and added the light armor perk, got that maxed out as well. And then I also added parkour. At max level, parkour is actually a really cool, cool perk. At max level, parkour reduces your stamina cost of jumping by 40%, increases the safe fall distance by 5%, you can jump two meters higher, plus, oh, and this is awesome, you never get a sprained or broken leg when falling. Since you're gonna be doing a lot of sneaking around, sometimes you have to do some jumping and some parkour in order to get the perfect position to get a shot on those zombie jerks. And the next tree that I added to was the fortitude tree. Went ahead and bumped up fortitude to level seven just so we could unlock some really important perks. First up is rule one cardio. I think this perk is a necessity for almost every build. If you're getting swarmed, sometimes you need to run away. Put 
but some distance between you and the zombie jerks. Having that additional 30% stamina regen while sprinting can be a lifesaver. Absolutely huge. I also added level 4 of healing factor and level 4 of pain tolerance. These two are important because we're wearing light armor. Light armor does not have as high damage mitigation as heavy armor. So if we get punched, it's going to hurt a lot more. So having the ability to decrease that, reduce HP loss by 20% and 80% less chance to get stunned, that is going to be very, very important if you happen to come across the zombie jerk and, and not take him down before he gets to you. Plus, we also have the ability to regenerate health. You get one health every 10 seconds and your critical injuries heal 80% faster. And all of these perks can be unlocked at level 62. It only takes 66 skill points in order to unlock these perks and get to this build, which means that at level 62, you can have this awesome ninja character. Very, very sneaky. Your weapons deal a crap ton of damage. Plus, if by chance you wake up the zombie jerks and they start smacking you, you're able to take the hits a little bit better and run away if necessary. Very important things to include in a stealth build. But that's pretty much all you need. That's it. Now, your guy is a ninja master. And I'm actually going to I'm actually going to demonstrate this here in a second. I'm going to show you how effective this build is. We're actually going to go raid a POI and I will demonstrate the stealth in action. I think it is time, ladies and gentlemen, to head out to a POI. I'm going to turn it to night just so I can demonstrate this st the effectiveness of the stealth build in a POI at night and just show you how awesome this build actually can be. So we're going to go switch over to night and I'm going to show you this bad boy in action. But before we head out and demonstrate the stealth build in action, I did want to take this opportunity to say, if you're finding this video helpful and or enjoyable, join the Sav Nation by clicking that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss a single one of our tutorial videos. Now, let's get to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I picked out a POI that I think would be great to demonstrate these perks. And the first thing we need to do is complete our build. What exactly do we want to take? Let's get rid of the stuff we're not gonna use and just stick with the stuff that we will be using on this raid. So for my build, I'm gonna go with the compound crossbow. That's just because it has a little bit better damage than the regular bow. And I'm gonna go with the SMG. Now I'm gonna go ahead and modify the pistol here. We're gonna take the silencer off of that. Let's remove the foregrip mod and add the silencer on there. All right, that'll be perfect. And we'll take everything else out of the hot bar, except I will keep my desert vulture on me. This is going to be my, oh crap, everything has gone wrong. I really need a powerhouse weapon. But honestly, that's really not gonna be needed uh, because because the SMG will do the trick. But just in case, we'll keep the Desert Vulture on us. So we have our weapons sorted out. These are the weapons that we're gonna be using. Now we need to decide on our armor. Now, I know most people would say, Oh, Savin, go with the military armor. It's the tier three armor. It's the best. I beg to differ, ladies and gentlemen. I'm actually going to go with the padded armor. And now you may be saying, that's insane. Why would you go with padded armor? The, the armor rating is only seven. It's crap. Why would you be using that? Well, that is because look at this, ladies and gentlemen, no stamina cost, no mobility penalty, and no noise increase. Plus you can add the muffle connectors mod on there and get your noise penalty into the negative. You're going to have a negative noise penalty. That means you're making even less noise than if you were to go around naked. And keep in mind, the purpose of a stealth build is not to mitigate damage, it's to kill the zombie jerks before they wake up and have the ability to damage you. So damage resistance is really not needed. Your main concern is to be as quiet as possible. Reduce those penalties as much as humanly possible. That's why, in my opinion, for a stealth build, the padded armor is the way to go. I've gotten all the, all the perks uh, that we want. I've got the books read that we want. We're actually going to go into sneaky sneak mode. Oh, and look at that. Look at our noise level. Two. Our noise level is two. All right, before we head in, let's just take a quick peek around, see if there's anybody. We've got Tom stumbling around out there. Well, let's go ahead and take him out just so he doesn't wander inside here. All right, Tom. Boom. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, even from this distance with that sneak damage. Oh, it is killer. 
Okay, guys, no more messing around. Let's get inside and let's get to it. Let's show you how effective this build actually is. So inside, look at that. Look at my noise level. Three. My noise level is three. Let's find a sleeping zombie jerk. All right, there's a sleeping zombie jerk like that. Now look how close I'm getting to him. Look at this. Hey, buddy, taking a snooze? You doing all right there, bud? Hey. And then he finally, he finally, he finally woke up. <laughs> <laughs> I literally had to go up and tap him on the shoulder to wake him up. Oh, and we killed his friend behind him. <laughs> but again, as soon as he woke up, switch over the SMG, boom, take him down. Didn't take a single point of damage. Absolutely love it. All right, so let's keep moving through the POI here. Let's head on upstairs, see if we can find some more sleeping zombie jerks. All right, we've got a vulture. Boom, we've got a dead vulture. <laughs> now you'll notice I'm sneaking over the trash, still not making a sound. Oh, look at this. Look at Tom. Hey, Tom. Let's see how close we can get to Tom before he wakes up. Hey, Tom, Tom. Hey, buddy, buddy, hey. <laughs> so we literally had to get right next to him <laughs> before he woke up. That is how effective the sneak, the stealth build can be. It is absolutely amazing. And look at this. Tom number two right over here did not wake up at all. Now let's take this opportunity here real quick. Let me demonstrate the difference between the padded armor and the, let's just do the military armor. So let's go ahead and throw on the uh, the military gear here and you'll notice the, uh, the noise level. Look at that. Okay, so we were at, sitting at three. Now we're up to 10, eight. So yeah, it's still pretty effective and you can still get right up in their face, but I would much rather have a noise level of one than I would a noise level of 10. So now we switch back to the padded. So now our standing is one and we get to move in and we're staying in single digits almost the entire way. The noise level is much, much lower. And I can be, I mean, I'm standing right in front of this dude. Hey, Tom, Tom, hello. Fine, don't wake up. <laughs> oh my gosh. You can literally go through the POIs and never wake up the zombie jerks. Not a single one. The only reason these some of these guys are waking up is because I literally stood on, on top of them. Literally right next to them, in the same block as them, and that's why they were waking up. Otherwise, just keep going, keep making your way. So like there's a zombie jerk right over there, and oh man, I can't see his head. Well, that's no good. I can't get a good headshot. Luckily, we don't have to worry about it. I don't have to be too, too far away. I can make my way over here. Now I've got a good headshot and boom, dead. And my noise level barely increased when I fired my weapon. That is awesome. <laughs> I love the stealth build. It is so, so very effective. Hey, Arlene, how are you? Do, 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 do. Take my time, shoot her in the face. <laughs> love it. She didn't even know I was here. Now we're coming out to the main loot area, the roof. So now with that um, book read, my jump height while sneaking is no longer reduced. So if I wanted to, I could just jump up here, jump onto the ledge and make my way around, see if there's anything out here. Oh, we got a vulture. We got a stupid vulture. Bye bye, stupid vulture. And I can jump up here. Now I know there's usually zombie jerks right in here. Yeah, I can see them through the crack there. Let's see if we can. Oh, darn it, I clicked. <laughs> Mind the gap, kill the jerk. Love it, absolutely love it. Let's go ahead and open this up. Oh, forgot to reload again. Just to make sure there's nobody else in there. And there's not, very good. Not only can you kill the jerks without them seeing them, uh, you can actually open up the zombie closets without them waking up. The stealth build is really, really effective. You can get right next to these jerks without them waking up. It is awesome. See, look at that, <laughs> I turned the corner. There's a cowboy right there and I'm right next to him. Hey buddy, how are you? You did, that's how you are. <laughs> oh, bye-bye, cowboy. Now, if I had not been sneaking or if my skill wasn't high enough, he would have woken up, he would have come and smacked me in the face and we could have had some uh, some some difficulties. But because of our stealth build, because of the perks that we've picked, he was no problem whatsoever. And because I have parkour, we can just drop on down and not have to worry about taking any fall damage. Boom, we're out and about. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so I've come to a second location here. I just want to demonstrate this. 
All right, nobody was in there. Okay, no worries, no problem. But I wanted to demonstrate the effectiveness of the stealth build in a house as well. Now let's see if there's a zombie jerk in here. There is, we've got the nurse. And again, she's sleeping soundly. I just uh, exploded the, the door in front of her, but she didn't hear a sound. Our noise level is two. And I missed it point blank range with a crossbow. <laughs> oh my gosh. There we go. <laughs> oh, I love it. The stealth build is amazing. You can kill almost every single zombie jerk without having to worry about them waking up and seeing you. A lot of times, like this, here, I, I just walked around that corner blindly, did not know this dude was right here. If I were not using a stealth build, that guy would have woken up and he would have come and smacked me in the face. And look what we have here, guys. We have a radiated zombie sleeping away, snoozing, but we've got our crossbow. 6.5 times sneak attack damage, shot him in the face, dead. Didn't even know I was here. Oh, and look at this. We've got a zombie jerk sleeping here and a zombie jerk sleeping over there. Well, what happens if we take out one? Will it wake up the other one? Nope. <laughs> kill him, reload, kill him, zombie jerk's dead, no problem whatsoever. Noise level one. Oh man, this is awesome. And now we're coming up to the attic. Oh, look at this, round in the corner, and what do we have here? A dead zombie jerk. <laughs> I was right next to him, he didn't even know I was there. Absolutely awesome. Seven Days to Die has done an outstanding job of balancing the various gameplay styles. In other games, and in previous versions of Seven Days to Die, this was not the case. Some styles were just better than the rest. But Alpha 19 of Seven Days to Die is extremely well balanced. You can effectively play this game the way you want. Any character build is viable in Seven Days to Die Alpha 19 and the stealth build is no exception. One of the main drawbacks to the stealth build in most games is that they are extremely slow. I mean, like, excruciatingly slow. In order to clear a POI or, or do a quest or, or complete a task, you would have to inch your way through using a stealth build. Not in Seven Days to Die, however. With the perks and books added to this game, you can actually develop a rather quick stealth build. While, yes, it may not be as quick as some other builds, it is much faster than in other games. So I must commend Seven Days to Die for their focus on the stealth build. They did a really, really good job. Now you can effectively clear a POI and it does not take you a million years to do it. That is awesome. It allows the player to play their playstyle without the game feeling tedious and extremely slow. One important thing I did want to mention is that stealth is not very effective on Horde Knight. So I would recommend that if you have a stealth build in mind, keep yourself a really nice set of heavy armor to use on Horde Knight. The purpose of a stealth build is to kill the zombie jerks before they wake up and come after you. That's not possible on Horde Knight. So instead of focusing on mitigating the penalties to wearing armor, it is much more important to focus on armor rating for Horde Knight. That is why I would recommend keeping a set of heavy armor that you can use on Horde Horde Knight. Get that damage resistance up because the zombie jerks automatically know where you are. Stealth is not an option. But all in all, the stealth build is awesome. The extra damage boosts you get to your bow weapons, the ability to reduce that noise level to a point where you can literally stand right next to the zombie jerk without them waking up, and the ability to utilize stealth without being as slow as a snail make the stealth build an excellent option for any player of Seven Days to Die. Now I demonstrated my preferred stealth build, but there are so many options, so many perks available that you can add things here, take things away there. So I'd like to know, what do you folks do with your stealth build? Are there perks that you add that I didn't add? Are there things that you think, ah, eh, they're not really important, don't really need to, to have those in your perfect stealth build? Let me know. I'd really, really be interested in hearing how you folks approach the stealth build. So let me know in the comments below. Are there perks that you think I should have added? Are there books that I missed? Do you think maybe I added some perks that I really didn't need? Let me know in the comments below. I, I would be very interested to hear you 
your take on the stealth build. And I hope that you folks have found this video helpful and or enjoyable. If you did and you'd like to see more tutorials like this one, I've created a very special playlist of tutorial videos with similar subject matter. You can access that playlist by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me in Savin's World. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.